Hi everyone, welcome to Impact Academy and Mr. Sushitara. So, uh, today let us go with uh, uh, what you say, some of the important questions of the Indian polity. Okay. So, Indian polity is a very important subject, whether it is Group 1 or Civils or Group 2, anything. And uh, if you look at the recent paper, you will observe that it is history uh, and the polity, these subjects which actually uh, save you uh, from the rest of the, because uh, current affairs, s &D, you cannot predict what kind of questions will be asked. But if you have very good grip on Indian polity, you will be able to do better. Okay. So, in the group 2 main examination, we have around 75 marks. Okay. 75 marks and this is the syllabus. So, irrespective of the syllabus, it covers almost everything in the Indian polity uh, by election count or DD plus everything. So, let us go with uh, the, what is uh, the frequently asked questions or the most important questions. Okay. So, let us start with it. Let us look at uh, the first question today. So, which of the following statements is correct regarding the Government of India Act of 1858? So, first let us look at the Government of India Act of 1858. Okay. So, all these are very important. Uh, Regulating Act, Amending Act, all those things and uh, the Start Act of 1813, 1853. 33, all these are very important. Let us look at the Government of India Act of 1858. So, these are the important points of 1858. It is also known as the Act for the Good Governance of India. Okay. And the rule of company was replaced by the rule of crowd. See, 1857, the revolt had happened, right? So, remember that. 1857, the revolt has happened. And when the revolt has happened, uh, the British Crown took over the administration of India. So, the power was transferred from the East India Company to the British Crown directly. And it changed the designation of Governor General to that of Viceroy. So, uh, the first Viceroy of India was Lord Canning. Okay, that is also very important. Frequent to ask question. So, in, after 1858, the Governor General became Viceroy. Okay, Viceroy and the first Viceroy is Lord Canning. That is also important. And also, it ab abolished the dual government of Pitts India Act. So, Pitts India Act brought in the dual government. Dual government as in, uh, you have this board of control, court of directors and all those things, right? And uh, we are talking about Pitts India Act. So, let us look at uh, the Pitts India Act. So, if you look at the Pitts India Act, 1784, this is also important. It distinguished between the commercial and political functions of the company. See, when East India Company came in the beginning, uh, it came as a training uh, body. It took the permission of the crown and it came as a training body. And later on after battle of Baksar and all those things we have seen that uh, they took the Diwani rights of uh, uh, Bengal, Bihar, uh, etc. And uh, then slowly they started with the regulating act. Okay, First and foremost act is regulating act. It is the first, uh, uh, first step taken by the British to control and regulate the affairs of East India. And Governor General, General of Bengal was made, Governor, uh, Governor of Bengal was made Governor General of Bengal. <coughs> And the first Governor General of Bengal was Lord Baring Hastings. Okay. And Pitts India Act, they brought this dual government. Okay. Court of Directors and Board of Control. So, that is one thing. And in 1858, they have abolished that. Okay. 1858, they abolished the dual government of the Pitts India Act. Next, this act also ended the doctrine of lapse. See, they tried to link and remember. Okay. Why did the revolt take place? Okay, doctrine of lapse is one of the major reasons for the revolt, right? Uh, they have uh, already annexed uh, Avad because of misrule. Uh, they have annexed, uh, what you say, um, uh, a question also came in the group one, right? Uh, Jansi, Satara, Nagpur and all these things. You have doctrine of lapse. Okay, and doctrine of lapse, you have to remember Lord Dalhousie. So, all these things. And because then the revolt happened and the British government realized that we need to have a better control over India. So, immediately they came and uh, they tried to do some amends. So, they ended the doctrine of lapse also. So, even if you don't remember, try to remember the story. Okay. The Secretary of State was a member of the British cabinet and was ultimately responsible to the British parliament. See, these statements today are more important. Uh, you can see the trend is changing and they are asking uh, more about analytical statements. So, what happened after the revolt? After the revolt, the, a new uh, office of Secretary of State was uh, created. Okay, the Governor General now became Viceroy and the Viceroy is looking after the administration in India. Now, the Secretary of State, he was a representative of the British Parliament. Okay, so he will be in India. He will be looking after the affairs of India. 
but he is a representative of the british parliament that is very important that is why uh, in the later uh, uh, acts you will see more lamentor reforms more tax transport reforms so one of them is the vice president and the other is the secretary of state fine and he also established the 15 member council of india to assist the secretary of state okay first thing is a secretary was created he was responsible to the british parliament and also 15 member council of india was uh, created to assist him fine so with this knowledge let us see so which of the following statements is correct regarding the government of india it ended the activities of east india company as a commercial body which became a purely administrative body so this is chart of act of 1833 okay let us, that statement actually belongs to the chart of act of 1833 so these are the important points in 1833 First and see, first and foremost thing, uh, 1833, you have to remember is Lord William Bentinck. Okay, the Governor General of Bengal now became Governor General of India, and the first Governor General of India is Lord William Bentinck. And whenever you say Lord William Bentinck, immediately one thing that should come to your mind is abolition of sati with the help of Raja Ram Mohan Roy, 1829. That is uh, very basic. Thing, okay, everybody has to know Lord William Bentinck abolition of sati 1829 uh, with the help of Raja Ram Mohan Roy. and it introduced the law member and the uh, provision for open competition was negated so if they say who introduced open competition for civil services that is the charter act of 1853 don't get confused charter act of 1853 introduced open competition for civil services but charter act of 1833 negated it did not allow and also charter act of 1833 ended the activity of east india company as a commercial body and became purely administrative body and it created for the first time new body called board of control so this uh, what you say board of control we saw in pics in the act right two bodies were created board of control and uh, board of directors so that is also wrong it established a 15 member council for india to assist the secretary of state which is true we have just seen if you look at 15 1858 okay we have seen that they created a 15 member council of india to assist the secretary of state so a new secretary of state position was created and uh, was, uh, that uh, secretary was directly responsible to the british parliament and also a 15 member council of india was created to assist him okay so the answer will be c and it introduced the open competition system for the selection and recruitment of civil service and where is that open competition we have seen 1853 right remember all these things very important see in 18 chapter act of 1853 they introduced the open competition for civil services so option c is the right answer 15 member council in india okay now let us go to the next question so with reference to the jammu and kashmir reorganization act so first statement is according to that both union of union territories of jammu and kashmir and ladakh are provided with a state legislature so we all know this is wrong right because uh, we all i mean if you are uh, reading the news paper regularly you will realize like the state of jammu and kashmir has been divided into union territories of jammu and kashmir and ladakh but ladakh does not does not have a state legislature okay only jammu and kashmir has a state legislature so this statement is wrong the union territory of jammu and kashmir will have advocate general which is true to provide legal advice to the government of union so this is true the jammu and kashmir uh, will have a advocate general and also the high court of jammu and kashmir the high court of jammu and kashmir will act as a common high court for both jammu and kashmir and ladakh remember that point also so two is right one is wrong so the answer will be b okay the answer will be b okay so let us continue with the third question so consider the following with reference to the socialism as adopted in our constitution so if you are talking about social credentials it will have in uh, the preamble okay if you look at the preamble it is very important uh, whenever we get an opportunity we have to look at it as a whole we cannot uh, 
just go to the question we have to read everything related to the question okay so this preamble is very very important very frequently questions are asked based on the preamble so what this preamble says we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into sovereign socialist secular democratic republic now sovereign democratic republic was there right from the before but this socialist secular and integrity was added with the 42nd amendment act very important so let us look at the 42nd amendment act 42nd amendment act is very important Okay, it is also called as the mini constitution because so many changes have been made. And one of the most important thing is it added the new three words that is socialist, secular, integrity in the preamble. And one more key point to be remembered is that the preamble has been amended only once. That is also frequently asked question. The preamble has been amended only once, and it added three new words: socialist, secular, integrity. When in by, uh, because of the Swaran Singh Committee, when 42nd Amendment Act of 1976. Okay, in 1976, that is during the emergency. Okay, in 1975, there, there was an emergency, right? So they brought in this 42nd Amendment Act so as to give more powers to the parliament. One way you can uh, look at it that way. And see, it has raised the tenure of law to 5 to 6 years. So they tried to increase the, uh, the powers of the parliament. And uh, did away with the requirement of quorum in parliament. That is, there is no need of attendance or quorum anything. And it provided for the creation of the All India Judicial Service. And uh, it shifted five subjects from the state list to the concurrent list. This is also very important. Okay. Today we see in the uh, central list there are 100 and uh, state list there are 61. But initially there were 66. So those five, which are education, forests, protection of wild animals and birds, weights and measures, and administration of justice. Okay, very important. All these have been shifted from state list to concurrent list. So that's why even the center can do uh, what you say, it can uh, enact uh, any amendments or acts on these particular uh, uh, issues, these particular issues. Okay, and all these things just go through very, very important. And uh, it added three new directive principles also equal justice, free, uh, free legal aid. Okay, and it comes in 43A, uh, participation of workers in management, etc. Protection of environment, forests, I believe it would be somewhere around 48, okay, 48, Article 48. And for a proclamation of national emergency in a territory of India. So, if you have to proclaim emergency, you need not do it in the whole of India. Where there is a, 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 a what is a requirement for emergency, in that particular area, you can proclaim. So, this is one thing. And... Uh, also, he is talking about uh, center to deploy armed forces to deal with grave situation of law and order. Okay, so all these things are very, very important. And uh, so, this is uh, what you say, 42nd Amendment Act of 1976 on the recommendations of the Swaran Singh Committee. Okay, it gave effect to the recommendations of Swaran Singh Committee. And the Swaran Singh Committee also added the fundamental duties, part 4A. Remember this also, very important. So, all these things we have seen. now. What is the question? So we see the we saw the preamble also. Okay, all that is fine. Now consider the following with reference to the socialism adopted in our constitution. So we we have added the new words secularism, socialism, and integrity. Now when you talk about the socialism in India and you talk about socialism in the other communist uh, uh, regions, according to the communist philosophy, there should not be any private property. The whole property should be on the name of the state, and the state should uh, uh, take action to distribute the wealth among everyone. So, but in India, we have a free open market, there is a vibrant uh, private sector, corporate sector, everything. So, Indian socialism is a mix of Gandhian and Marxist philosophy. So, even though the state is there and uh, there is a welfare, uh, I mean, the state tries to be a welfare state, that's why we see so many uh, schemes giving the free race and everything, all that. Is they are all socialist ideologies to take care of the welfare of the state. At the same time, uh, we follow also follow the uh, what is a mixed capitalistic. Uh, that means the private sector, the corporate sector also is very prominent. The government government does not try to control the private sector. And so in our socialism, we are trying to uh, what you say uh, deal with the poverty, ignorance, disease, inequality of opportunity, all these things. Okay, so let us look at 
So it is V means one, two, three, four. So all these are coming. with reference to the Indian uh, form of socialism. Uh, which of the challenges given are addressed by the democratic socialism? So ours is a democratic socialism. Okay, ours is a democratic socialism, and you know democratic socialism. These are the challenges which we face. That is why we often come with uh, garibi hatao, etc. Right? Garibi hatao, all the things: poverty, ignorance, this is inequality of opportunities, etc. Now let us look at. Fourth question. So, which which one of the following is most correct with regarding to rights? So, we have uh, I mean fundamental rights and uh, all those uh, several things. But in general, when you talk about rights, okay, rights are those claims that are recognized by the society as legitimate claims. And right is not about personal choices. Rights are uh, uh, society does not need to acknowledge. You see, the society needs to, okay. Uh, whatever your right, if you say something is my right, okay, the society should also accept. You cannot say that uh, I will completely. Uh, uh, I mean, I will go and uh, do anything whatever uh, I like. So it is my right. No, the society has to accept. So wh what are whatever is the fundamental right, even those they come under the purview of the society also. So I would say the answer is A. So rights are those claims that are recognized by the society as legitimate claims. Okay, try to remember that. So this is a tricky question, but you have to uh, remember this very clearly because if such a question comes, you should not get confused. So it is easy to think that if it is your fundamental right, means you can think you can do whatever you want. Okay, right. Uh, obviously, bestowed upon elite citizens, definitely this is wrong because uh, our uh, constitution uh, provides for equality of everyone, equality of law and equal protection of laws. So uh, there is no concept of. Uh, Some citizens getting the more privileges, okay. But you might think this particular option, for example, rights are something that individuals decide, but society does not need to. So you might think there is no need for acceptance of the society for my rights, okay. That is where you might get confused. But the society also has to recognize as legitimate claim. Okay, those only become the rights of the citizens. Okay, so important question. Let's move on to the next question. So which of the following duties are mentioned in Part 4A of the Indian Constitution? Again, part uh, these parts are also very important. If you look at uh, parts, you have to keep repeating these things. Okay, you have to keep repeating these things, otherwise you will not remember. And frequently questions will be asked, especially Group 2. Also, there are 75 marks, so all kinds of questions will be asked. One-liners will be asked. Questions based on parts, schedules, articles will be asked. And the tough questions will be asked, so you have to prepare and quality uh, and AP history, history, history. Of course, is not there, but in general, I'm take, I'm saying quality, uh, history, geography also usually. And uh, these subjects are very scoring. Subjects like current affairs, SNT. No matter how much you read, okay, if a tough question is asked, you cannot uh, what you say answer it. And even if you answer it, the chance if you have rough idea and if you try to answer that question. Chance of it going wrong is more, but in quality, even if you are able to identify fifty-fifty, uh, and if you uh, go for the option, the chance of it becoming right is more. So quality is more important, especially for this group to focus more on AP history, quality, and economy also. See economy, if it can be asked either way, okay? Uh, because it is seventy-five marks, uh, some static uh, part will be asked, and some dynamic part will be asked. So the dynamic part might be a little bit tough, definitely. Okay, but the static part you should be able to uh, answer. So even economy, try to uh, put more effort. Okay. Anyway, let's uh, look at the parts. So all these are very important. Part one is union and territory. Part two is citizenship. Part three is fundamental rights. Part four is DPSP, and part four is fundamental duties. <coughs> There are total twenty-five parts. Okay, initially there were twenty-two, twenty-two, and then you have this four A, twenty-three, and here twenty-four, twenty-five, and you have this twenty-six. Okay, fourteen uh, years fifteen years. So these have been added later, twenty-six. And if you observe, part seven is not there. Six is there, eight is there, seven has been repealed. So twenty-six minus one, twenty-five. Remember this also. Okay. How many schedules are there? Twelve schedules. How many parts? Twenty-five parts. How many articles? Um, 
395 numbered articles, but if you take the sub parts, there are around 448. Okay, 448 anyway. So, important one is right now we are dealing with 4A fundamental duties. You can try to remember the other also 9 panchayats, okay, 9 municipalities, 9B is cooperative societies. This is relatively new, okay, and uh, 15 is elections. Try to remember because elections are uh, very near, right? <laughs> so, 324. Article 324 is very important. It uh, deals with the election commission. It says that the election commission, which is the constitution, of course, it doesn't mention constitutional body and all that. It says that the right to, con I mean, uh, the conduct of elections, everything will be under the supervision of the election commission. So remember, Article 324 very important and Part 15, okay, and uh, Amendment Part 20 very important. Part uh, what is this? 18, okay, Part 18, uh, emergency provisions. 352, 356, 360, 360 is financial emergency, uh, 352 is national emergency, 356 is president rule. Okay, all these are very, very important, these parts. All those are important. And now look at let us look at fundamental duties. Okay, fundamental rights, fundamental duties is also very important. This has been added with the uh, Swaransing recommendation of the Swaransing Committee and 42nd Amendment Act of 1976 added. Uh, part 4a all that is important and this last one uh, this duty was added by the 86th constitutional amendment of 2002 so basically right to education we also have article 21a right very very important and in the dpsps we have article 45 all those deal with education of the child and because 21a is a fundamental right it uh, the state shall provide education from 6 to 14 years that is why in all the government schools education is free right to education let us give, uh, quickly go through the fundamental duties. <coughs> so, according to Article 51A, 51A exclusively deals with fundamental duties. How many are there? Initially 10, later 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, initially 10 were there, and uh, after 86 Constitutional Amendment Act of 2002, this last one was added regarding education. It is the duty of uh, uh, what you say every ward to provide age uh, education to his child between the age of 6 to 14 years. So, to abide by the constitution and respect ideals, institutions, national flag, anthem. Okay, so this fundamental duty is you have to read so many times that just by looking at the statement, you have to tell whether it is yes or no. Okay, no need you, you not even read the statement, just you look at the statement and you see this cherish, follow, noble ideas, just dryly. And you say, yes, this is part of fundamental duty. So you have to, it comes with uh, practice multiple number of times, okay? To uphold, or uphold and protect sovereignty, unity and integrity of India. Defend the country, render national service. Promote harmony, spirit of common brotherhood and uh, all these things. Renounce practices, derogatory of dignity of women. So they might ask, uh, the fundamental duties does not uh, uh, talk about uh, women because in the DPSP, you have uh, article 42. And several other articles which talk about uh, equal pay for equal work and uh, protect uh, what you say uh, uh, maternity relief, human and uh, dignity of women, all those things. So remember, even fundamental duties talk about the dignity of women to value and preserve the rich heritage and cultures of countries, composite culture to protect uh, and improve the natural environment, including forests, lakes, rivers, wildlife, to have compassion for all living creatures. And also in DPSPs, we have something related to environment, okay, around 48, like that. We look into that. To develop scientific temper, humanism, and spirit of inquiry and reform. To safeguard public property and abjure violence. To strive toward excellence in all spheres of individual and collective activity. So, all these things, just by looking at it, you should be able to tell whether it is a fundamental duty or not. So, which of the following are mentioned in okay? To make provisions for just and human conditions for work and maternity, maternity relief, this is Article 42, part of DPSP, okay? This is not fundamental duty. To develop scientific temper, just now we saw, this is a uh, fundamental duty, a spirit of inquiry and reform. Okay? To defend the country and render national service, yes, it is a fundamental duty, just now we have seen. To promote equal justice and provide free legal aid, this is 43A, if I am not wrong, okay? This is part of DPSP. To cherish and follow the noble ideas, yes, this is uh, fundamental duties. So, the answer is C, 2, 3 and 5, okay, 2, 3 and 5, so 2, 3 and 5, in this case, all belong to the fundamental duties, 
okay let us stop for now we will continue uh, so this will be a series of questions we will try to cover, uh, cover around uh, um, if possible 200 300 questions okay per class we will try to cover five questions and uh, we will uh, go on like that we will try to cover 200 to 300 questions and in such a way that uh, you literally need not prepare anything else for quality if you go through these questions multiple times we are also covering the theory side by side so if you finish all these questions uh, 200 300 questions two to three times by the time uh, we get the group to mains you will be able to get easily around uh, 50 to 60 marks out of 75 and that's a very good score okay so that is the the idea of this session it will be a series okay this is the first uh, uh, class it will be a series of uh, probably uh, 20 30 classes okay fine let us continue the next session